This video will assist Sanders Sound System customers with performing the essential adjustments for the new Model 10E. I will refer to the pre-programmed loudspeaker management system with its blue LCD screen by the abbreviation LMS. The same instructions are applicable for existing 10C and 10D customers who choose to purchase a pre-programmed LMS unit from Roger Sanders. As I had done prior to starting this video, begin by placing the volume level on your preamplifier or source player to a low level. Next, without touching any controls on your LMS device, start playing music that contains plenty of bass and slowly increase volume to a medium level. If you hear no music, or it sounds abnormal, stop immediately. Reduce volume to zero, power down your system, and check all connections. If necessary, please contact Sanders Sound Systems for assistance with any questions. For demonstration purposes, I have turned off my amplifiers temporarily so that you can hear these instructions. When your system is connected properly and you have bass heavy music playing at a medium level, you should notice that on the front right side of your LMS device, a vertical string of green metering lights on both the input and outputs are displaying the dynamic music levels. If you overdrive the LMS, you will see an amber light near the top of the string just before clipping. The upper light is red, and if you see the red light, you are overdriving the crossover and causing clipping distortion. Once you are sure that there is no clipping, stop the music. Position yourself in front of the LMS device and we will perform the essential adjustment for the bass treble balance just as instructed in page 2 of the supplemental manual. First let's make sure we're on the proper page that says 10E custom two-way. The top left corner should say edited preset 1. If you do not see this screen, simply press the up or down arrow button to return to that screen. 10E Custom 2-Way, Edited Preset 1. Okay, let's begin. Press the Edit button on the front panel of your LMS. The Edit light turns green and Edit Mode appears in the upper left corner of the LCD screen. Also, you should see many different shape boxes or modules on the LCD screen that represent various items that can be adjusted. Next, you must learn how to use the large round multifunction knob on the LMS device. First, you're going to be turning the knob to highlight the box or module that you want, which in this case, it's the crossover module that's represented by a rectangle that says 2x4. There's the only rectangle, 2x4. So you're going to rotate this knob until it's highlighted, and you'll notice it's highlighted when it's a different color from all the rest. Once you've correctly highlighted the crossover 2x4 module, push the same large multifunction knob inward once to select that module. The crossover menu will then appear on the top of the LCD screen. If you do not see this screen, Press the back button twice and start over. Edit. Rotate the knob until you highlight the 2x4. Press the knob to select it. You're good to continue. Now you will see two vertical columns of information to the left of the frequency response graph. The left column lists 14 parameters, while the right column shows the corresponding values for those parameters. We only want to modify the value for one of these parameters labeled Lowe's Gain that essentially is your base volume. It will be the tenth parameter down the list. We will modify that base volume adjustment when the right column value is highlighted directly across from Lowe's Gain. To toggle back and forth between the two vertical columns you simply push the large round knob inward once. You can see the left top item is highlighted in the left column, 
Now the top item is highlighted in the right column because I pushed that round large, large knob inward once. Push it a few times and watch the highlighted item alternate between the columns. Once comfortable, press the round knob until the left column is highlighted. To the left of the round knob is the up arrow button. Press or hold down the up arrow button until it stops at the top and you've highlighted high's low pass frequency. Next, press the down arrow button until you've highlighted low's gain in the left column. I said it was the tenth parameter. If we start on one, we need to press that down arrow button nine times. So we start at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, tenth parameter. Once you've highlighted Lowe's gain, you will press the large round knob inward once to toggle over to the right column, where soon you will adjust the value for your Lowe's gain and overall base volume. Before turning the LMS knob to adjust your bass volume up or down, however, restart playing some bass heavy music again. This time, however, use your preamplifier or source player to set your volume level to a medium loud but sensible level. While listening to music, rotate the large round knob on the LMS like you would any volume control to either increase or decrease the loudness of the bass to what you find to be a pleasing balance between the bass and treble. Take your time and listen to a few different types of bass heavy music and songs. Listen for the changes in tonal balance while you're adjusting your bass volume. When you are reasonably comfortable with your lows gain setting at your listening position, stop the music. Press the back button twice to return to the main screen. The green light in the edit button will go out when you're back on the main screen. You will see that there is now a red light on in the store button, notifying you that you should save your settings so that you, re you can retrieve them later if needed. However, storing your settings is not required. If you elect not to store them, the red light on the store button will remain lit just as you see it here on my LMS device. Pressing the store button once gives you the option to rename the file by following the directions on the LCD screen. Pressing the store button a second time provides the option to place the file where you want in the list of files. A third press of the store button actually stores the file. However, if you, do know, if you do not want to name a new file or move it on the file list, you may simply press the store button three times. This shortcut will save your settings automatically in the first file named 10E Custom 2-Way. For convenience, original factory settings also are stored in the second file labeled Factory. Set the brightness of your LCD screen so that it is reasonably easy for you to read its contents in your specific environment. To modify the LCD brightness, press the Utility button. Well, here's the Edit button. Over here is Recall. Down below at the bottom, Utility. Press the down or up arrow button to highlight LCD backlight. LCD contrast, LCD backlight. Once highlighted, press the large round knob inward once to select LCD backlight. Press the up or down arrow to choose between dim, medium, or bright. Once you've highlighted your brightness choice, press the round knob inward once to select it. When satisfied with your brightness setting, simply press the back button twice.